Hey everyone, Coach Lance from OnlineHockeyTraining.com and welcome to another segment of the Sunday Motivational Video. So do you know that you, Connor McDavid, Austin Matthews, Patrick Kane, and Sidney Crosby all have something in common? Because you do. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe and turn on that notifications button or you'll be getting left behind. Each Sunday, I'll be bringing you a topic that you maybe aren't currently aware of, but if you can get exposed to it sooner than others, take it all in and start applying it to your life, well then you know what happens. You get a competitive advantage over others that choose not to do so. If I were you, I'd keep watching. So the question question of the day is, what do you have in common with Connor McDavid, Austin Matthews, Patrick Kane, and Sidney Crosby? Anything come to mind? We're really good looking. Uh, maybe. What you do have in common with those four superstars is access to the same 24 hours each and every day. What the heck does that have to do with anything? Well, you see, as you get older, the one thing most adults are trying to get more of each day is time. What McDavid, Matthews, Kane, and Crosby have all figured out is how to maximize their 24 hours a day in order to accomplish a huge amount of daily objectives that inch them closer to their final destination, which was to one day play in the NHL. What if I told you I could share everything that those superstars and pretty much every other professional college and junior player has learned along the way in order to give themselves the best opportunity to reach their goal. Would you be interested? All right then, let's begin. It all starts with viewing your 24 hours differently, but more importantly, valuing your 24 hours way more than you do now. Some call it time management, I call it finding your day. Here are the top ways you can get the most out of your daily 24 hours. The one thing about time you need to know is that it's constant. It can't be altered in any way. It doesn't care if you're rich and famous. It just keeps ticking away one second at a time. If you're a young kid, boy or girl, the concept of time doesn't mean anything to you as your days have been scheduled since you were born where you haven't had to think about much regarding what you'll be doing for each day. You wake up every morning and whatever is going on in your life is controlled by your parents who will let you know what's on the agenda for each day usually the night before. So at what point in time in our life do we start to recognize how valuable each hour in a day is? Let me see if this will help. What if I told you I was going to give you a check for $800,000? That's a lot of money, right? What did you just say? Yeah, you heard me correctly. I'm going to give you a check for $800,000. Take a moment to think about what you could do with all that money. You could buy as many new hockey sticks as you wanted, buy pizza for your team after every game, and even maybe surprise your mom and dad with a little spring break vacation at some beachfront resort down in the Caribbean. The possibilities are endless. Now let's flip it and look at it from a different perspective. So now, instead of me giving you a check for $800,000, I'm now going to give you, for free I might add, 800,000 hours that you can use for whatever it is you want. Whoa, 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 you just lost me there. What the heck are you talking about? I thought I just got rich. You see, the 800,000 hour number represents the number of hours you'd have in your life if you were to live till you were in your early 90s, and every day that goes by, that number goes down by 24. When you're a youngster, 800,000 seems like a huge huge number. But when you start subtracting 24 from the total each day, when you're in your 40s or 50s, those hours start to become more and more valuable because you start to realize that that number doesn't reproduce. It just gets smaller and smaller and smaller each day. So if you now know that once you get to adulthood, the one commodity you'll be searching for ways to get more of is time. So how does one go about learning how to maximize their 24 hours each day? Here are the top five ways to improve your time management skills and if applied to your daily life, well, you'll be able to accomplish pretty much anything you want in life, especially in your hockey life. Tip number one, set goals and rewards. In order to accomplish anything big in life, you first must identify what you want. This is your long-term goal and is something that you are super passionate about, think about daily, and spend time pushing the needle a little closer to your end destination each week. In order to have consistent gains each week, you have to set up short sprints each day, which are called short-term goals. This is your daily to-do list of things you want to accomplish each day. If you've never done this before, start small and then grow your list each week. 
For example, instead of sleeping in on the weekends, you're now going to set an alarm and wake up at a specific time. When the buzzer sounds, you're going to get up and make your bed. Use the bathroom, of course, have a quick bite to eat until breakfast, and go right back to your room and study for an hour. Then take a 15-minute break and back to your room for one more hour of studying. Setting goals is crucial for planning your day. By setting daily and weekly goals, you create small attainable targets and you won't fall off schedule. Before deciding your objectives, you have to look deeply inside and ask yourself, do you really want to achieve those things? Knowing your ambitions can help maximize your productivity and get the most out of your 24 hours. Also, after every objective or goal that you achieve, you can reward yourself. These rewards can be a short gaming break, watch some videos, reply to a text or two, have a snack, or even take a nap after longer stints. Oh, do I love naps! Me too. Tip number two, prioritize your daily objectives. One of the key components to your long-term success is learning how to prioritize your daily objectives or tasks. If you get really good, your ability to focus on one task for longer periods of time becomes contagious and leaks into other areas of your life where you've always struggled to gain any traction. When planning your days and week, some have suggested to label your objectives as urgent or important. I have used this strategy in the past, but found myself being inconsistent on my daily execution. The reason being, I had so many things on my list, I became overwhelmed, procrastinated, and never really got much to the finish line each day. That's until I made a slight adjustment. Instead of focusing on so many things, I started to condense my daily list into two or three different objectives. I now block out a two to three hour period in my day and dedicate my full attention at bringing those two to three objectives to the finish line in that time period. If I can't complete them all in the window of time, whatever is left is carried over to the next two to three hour block and an additional objective or two is added to the list. This has been my process on how I prioritize my daily objectives. It's a bit of a hybrid of what's been suggested by others in the past, but you should investigate what's all out there, tinker with a number of the techniques and see which one works best for you. Tip number three. No multitasking, remove distractions. There are a lot of you out there that believe you have no issues with multitasking and somehow feel you're different in that how you are one of the few people in this world that can effectively multitask. Sorry to burst your bubble, but those people don't exist. What are you talking about? I can watch hockey, eat popcorn, and sit in a chair all at the same time. Yes, and that's impressive, but things that really matter, like school or work, I'm sorry, but a 2009 Stanford University study from Clifford Noss found that heavy multitaskers were less mentally organized, struggled at switching from one task to another and had a hard time differentiating relevant from irrelevant details. Another study conducted by Andy Kearns, creative director at Digital Third Coast, says many people believe multitasking is focusing on more than one task at a time, which is actually impossible. What's really happening is you're shifting attention from one thing to the next, from social alerts, text messaging to music every few seconds without ever fully being present on one task, he said. So I guess there's saying that if you want to be more productive with a higher quality of work, say no to multitasking and eliminate distractions from your workspace. Tip number four, link your actions to your goals. I'm going to assume that if you're watching this video, you're chasing something and trying to achieve higher goals in your life and want to cut down on the stuff that's dragging you behind. So one really cool exercise you can do to see if your goals link up with your actions is to take a piece of paper and make two lists. One with the objectives you're aiming for, like getting better grades in school, learning how to play the piano, or just maybe it's getting a little better at hockey. The other list is made up of the things that you're spending the most time on each day. What this will show you is what's occupying a lot of your free time every day, when you're not sleeping, eating, or at school. And then you'll see if those actions match up with what you're saying you want to achieve. If they don't, then you're probably going in the wrong direction. And because your goals and dreams don't match up with your actions, then your goals are not goals. They're just wishes. It's as simple as that. Tip number five. Break down your 24. Another way you can get complete clarity on how much time you actually have to work with each day is to break down your 24 hours. Since school is in session, if you're 18 years or under, your day is basically the same most weeks, Monday through Friday. First, let's start with sleep. It's recommended that teenagers need roughly nine hours of sleep each night. 
School will knock off close to another seven hours. Even though you had seven hours of school, don't forget, you'll have on average at least one hour of homework most nights. If you're playing a sport, that will clip a couple more hours off your 24. Right now, 19 hours have been eliminated from your 24. Is it starting to make sense for you now? Here's the two biggest wild cards for all you young people out there. It's how much time you're spending doing this or interacting and consuming content on this. Researchers have shown that 56% of teens, ages 13 to 17, play video games for an average of 2.5 hours per day. Another study indicates that most teenagers could be spending between six and nine hours online. That's crazy. If you want to increase your productivity and ability to start achieving more things on a weekly basis, identify what you truly want in life, and then get a better handle on your 24 hours and start valuing your day way more than you do now. Well, that's a wrap for this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, throw me a like and share it with someone in your hockey circle. Coach would appreciate it. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. If you've been having a tough time getting started doing some off-ice stick handling and shooting training at home, we'll take a look at onlinehockeytraining.com. I might be able to help. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.